Okay, picture a scenario. You are building a SaaS app, it's growing, and you get a chance to pitch your first six-figure contract. This is huge news. Giant client, they've got tons of users, and they ask you for SSO, because of course they do. They got a lot of employees, they need to be able to manage them. But SSO can be pretty daunting. Where do you start? How do you actually configure it? There's a bunch of moving parts. It just seems really hard. Fortunately, WorkOS has been working really hard on this problem and they have implemented a truly just like ooh, beautiful workflow for setting up SSO and making it so that getting enterprise ready in a SaaS app is actually kind of nice. Huge thanks to WorkOS for making this one possible. I'm Jason Langsdorf. Let's learn something new. First step is to sign in or sign up at workos.com. Once you get in, you're going to be looking at your dashboard. First, we're going to add a redirect URI. This is what we're going to end up building. So let's set it to localhost port 3000 slash auth slash SSO slash redirect. Save that. And it's going to look just like this for you. Next up, head to organizations and we're going to create a new organization. So we can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it learn with Jason and then set the URL that you use to log in to uh your IDP. So in my case, we've got Okta set up with the learnwithjason.dev. If you have multiple domains, you can add those. Everything else stays default and create organization. Next, we're going to set up single sign-on. So hit this configure button and choose Okta. And you can give it a name any you want. I'm going to use Okta so that I can find it easily. Now, these URLs are what we're going to use to configure Okta itself. Open up Okta. We are going to head down to applications, and then we're going to create an app integration. Choose SAML 2.0. Hit next and give this any app name you want. We're going to call it Learn with Jason. And then you can hit next. On the second screen where it says configure SAML, we're going to use some of these URLs that were generated by WorkOS. So the ACS URL is going to be what we use as the single sign on URL. And the SP entity ID is what goes in here. With those two URLs set, we can leave the rest default until we get down to these attribute statements. Add a few of them here. We're going to use user.id and then we're going to add another. We want this one to be the email. We need the first name and the last name. And each of these we can actually grab right out of this drop down here. With these attribute statements set, you can scroll down, hit next, and then you're going to get asked a question. So choose I'm an Okta customer adding an internal app. The rest of these fields are optional. So if you want to, you can answer them. Otherwise, you can just scroll right down and hit finish. And here, if we scroll down, we can see this metadata URL. Copy that under identity provider configuration, hit edit configuration, drop in that URL and save. And once the metadata URL is saved, we have an active connection. Now, the reason companies like single sign-on is because they're able to control access to apps from a single place. So in Okta now, you can go to your users and you can either add a person. And if we click in here, we can see how to assign applications and learn with Jason is one of them. Or you can also add a group or you can just assign it to everyone. So if I go to everyone and I choose applications, I can assign an application and say that everyone in the company is allowed to use Learn with Jason now. And this will allow everybody who joins to sign in using single sign-on through their WorkOS integration. So this is a huge time saver for teams and one of the major reasons why companies push for it. Now that WorkOS and Okta are configured, let's build it into the app. So we've got this starter app here called WorkOS Six Figure SaaS Contracts, and we're going to be using the start branch. So go ahead and get that cloned down. And in the directory here, you can see that you've got an app.ts. We're using Fastify. This is very similar to Express. So all the same concepts will apply. And that just uses a few templates to show a dashboard. So our first step is going to be to configure our .env here. So the session secret can be anything as long as it's longer than 32 characters. I used a UUID generator like this. Uh, so you can just copy this and throw it right in. The redirect URI is going to match the one that you set in WorkOS. Then we're going to need our WorkOS API key and client ID. The API API key and the client ID are going to be right on your home page, the overview tab of WorkOS. So you can just copy these two values and get those put in. And then your WorkOS org ID is going to live right up at the top of the org homepage. So you can copy this value here and drop it in here. And then once you're done, you're going to set that as .env and you're off to the races. Get this app running with npm run dev. And this opens up in port 3000. So if we open up localhost 3000, right now there's no authentication. So if you click through to the dashboard, it just shows you the dashboard and we've got a fallback to show you the guest. So this page needs to be protected by WorkOS single sign-on. And we're going to personalize it a little bit using the data that we get back from Okta. Open up app.ts. 
You're going to import WorkOS from the WorkOS Inc. slash node package. Then you're going to create a new instance of WorkOS by passing in your API key. Then down in the app, above the app views, we can add in the SSO flow. So we're going to start with this auth slash SSO, which is going to send a request through WorkOS to get the authorization URL using your client ID, your org ID, and your redirect URI. And then it's going to send the user to that authorization URL, which will let them log in using Okta. Once the user's authenticated, they're going to get sent to our redirect URI. So we need to handle that as well. So first at the top, we need to bring in another type, which is going to be the redirect request. Down underneath the login flow, we're going to add this redirect URL route handler. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the request and the response. We want to pull the code out of the query parameters. And then we use the work OS get profile and token to send the code and the client ID to exchange it for user data. And we're going to be using this profile. And for now, we just console log it and then redirect the user to the dashboard. With that configured, we can test this by trying to log in. And that's going to send us out to Okta where we can do our login. That redirects us back to our dashboard. And now we will be logged in. And if we look at our console, we can see some of the profile data down here that we're going to be able to use to customize the page. To make that user data available to our app, we're going to be using sessions. We're going to import cookie and session, and then we need to register those plugins. So we'll go down here where the other registrations are, register Fastify cookie, and then the session. The session is going to take that randomly generated session secret. And for cookie, we're going to check if we're in production. If we're in production, we want to make sure that our cookies are secure and HTTP only and all those good things. But on localhost, that won't work. So we're going to set secure false if we're not in production to allow for testing. Next, down in our redirect URL, we're going to replace that console log with a call to store the user in the session. So we're going to grab out that ID, first name, last name, and email, which are the things that we set as the attributes we wanted. And those come right out of that profile that was returned from the work OS call. And then to see that actually work down here in the home page, we can grab the user out of the session and display it on the home page. So we'll say request session user. So we can test this by going to the home page. We're going to hit this login. That's going to redirect us through Okta. And then when we come back, it's going to show us that we are logged in as Jason or I'm logged in as Jason. You'll be logged in as you. To make sure the dashboard's only visible if you're logged in, we can come in here and make a check. If there's no user ID, then we can just redirect somebody to the login page. If they are logged in, we're going to show them the dashboard and include their users so we can do a little bit of personalization. And now on the dashboard, you can see it's personalized to me as the logged in user. So our last bit is to handle the logout flow. So up here under our redirect URL, we can drop in an auth logout. And what this is going to do is destroy that session and then redirect to the home page. So we can save this. So now out here, if we hit log out, it's going to log us out. And now if I try to manually head to the dashboard while I'm logged out, it's going to force me to log in first before I can actually see anything. And so believe it or not, you're done. This is all it takes to set up SSO using work OS to have Okta as your IDP and to go out and land those big enterprise clients that expect things like this to work in your SaaS app. Adding SSO used to be a complete nightmare, but the developer experience on it today is actually pretty nice thanks to companies like WorkOS. Don't let something like we need to add SAML 2.0 or federated identity or whatever SSO thing stand in the way of you going out and landing those bigger contracts. Thanks again to WorkOS for making this one possible. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe so that you get notified of new ones. We'll see you next time, friends.